it's almost unbearable to watch. Caught on tape, New Orleans police officers repeatedly punching a 64-year-old man accused of public drunkenness. At least two news crews were there to witness and tape the beating, including CNN, who filmed this gruesome video, the aftermath, showing the victim covered in blood. The other crew from the Associated Press became part of the story when an officer pushed the crew's producer and pinned him against a car. In an expletive-filled tirade, the cop yelled for the producer to go home, saying he's been in New Orleans for the last six weeks just trying to keep himself alive. New Orleans Police Chief Warren Riley watched the video with CNN. He said while it doesn't show everything, the officers used more force than necessary. Two bad cops. Mm -hmm. It happens everywhere. But in a city ravaged by the destruction of Katrina, this couldn't come at a worse time. Today he made the rounds on TV doing damage control and answering to the media. We will take decisive action once we gather all the facts. He was charged with public intoxication and resisting arrest. The video has been the top story for many networks today, playing repeatedly. We have to be very careful about the images that we're conveying about law enforcement in general. If people think that the only thing that cops do in New Orleans is beat people up, um, that's really not, a, journalists aren't living up to their professional duty. But it isn't the first time police brutality has been caught on tape. In 1991, America watched in horror as video of Rodney King being beaten by police was played repeatedly. It sent shockwaves through the nation and caused massive riots in Los Angeles. And the media played a definitive role. The media's coverage of that really set you know, a, a series of events in motion that had drastic consequences in Los Angeles. Please, you guys, do not resist them! In 2002, with onlookers gasping in disbelief, a 16-year-old boy was handcuffed, lifted by his feet, and slammed onto the roof of a police car. That same year in Oklahoma City, two police officers were caught on tape doing this, hitting a man repeatedly with their batons. Authorities contend the cops used necessary force to subdue the suspect. In 2003 in Cincinnati, authorities say they were using their nightsticks in self-defense after a 350-pound man attacked them. Put your hand behind your back. That man later died, but because the man had heart disease and was high on cocaine and PCP. The cops were not held responsible. And while it may seem easy to pass judgment, Darman says we may not be getting the entire story from those videotapes. The problem here is we're not seeing what it is that necessarily has provoked these police officers. We're not seeing, we don't often have the audio there. We can't hear what they're hearing. We don't really know what's going on inside their head that's making them so agitated. The images of police brutality playing out on our TV screens also hearken to a much darker time in America. The most graphic and, and horrifying images of police brutality that we've seen go back to the civil rights movement. And so it's making this video so powerful. People think, see a video of black civilians still getting beaten up by white police officers and we really have to question how far have we come. And in late breaking news, a civil rights investigation has now been opened by the Justice Department and the FBI. Those three New Orleans police officers pleaded not guilty today to battery charges. These are pictures of them appearing before a judge to make their pleas. They were released on bond soon afterwards. The trial is set for January. They've been suspended from duty and are now upset about the way the situation has been handled. A spokesperson for the police department says they thought their actions were justified given the circumstances. Brooke? David, these images, of course, call shock, debate, and concern among citizens. Thank you for that story. We appreciate it.